friends uh, in this lecture i am going to talk about the basics of the hydrogen atom spectra and i will also discuss about the different selection rules that is applicable uh, in uh, in case of hydrogen atomic spectra so before uh, start of my lecture uh, i am just uh, want to remind you to subscribe to my channel chembiosis for this types of lecture so uh, the this is the equation by which we can actually express the energy uh, level of any hydrogen atom quantum mechanical model system so as you can see this en which defines the energy of the nth state for hydrogen atom so this n is basically called the principal quantum number which can have any integer number in between 1 to infinity so this all these things i have already discussed in my uh, lecture dedicated lecture to hydrogen atom the or quantum mechanical model for hydrogen atom so if you go through that lecture you can understood this section very well so you can see that this is the energy expression for any nth quantum mechanical state of an hydrogen atom so you can see that in this equation the first part is basically all these are constant and the second part is that 1 by n whole square so you can see that basically the energy is totally depending upon the uh, principal quantum number n so as this principal quantum number increases the energy will also increase okay now suppose uh, as we have told you that hydrogen is basically a single electronic system so suppose uh, the n1 state is basically populated with one electron and suppose we supply some energy so which energy the energy is basically exactly equal to this energy gap between the en1 state and en2 state so this electron will absorb that that much of energy and it will get excited and will be populated into n2 state as you can see so this phenomenon is basically called the absorption phenomenon so this state is basically called the ground state where the electron is residing in the lower energy state on the other hand this state is basically called the excited state where the electron is basically residing on an higher energy state now you can see that there is some energy gap delta e so this delta e is basically the energy difference between the n1 state and n2 state okay so this energy gap is basically equal to e energy of n2 state minus energy of n1 state and as uh, we have seen that this h new amount of energy is being supplied and the exact energy is being absorbed by the electron it goes to the higher energy state so this h new that is the energy that is supplied will be equal to the difference between this two state so e n2 minus e n1 is equal to h new where h is basically a planck's constant so which has value 6.627 into 10 to the power minus 27 and the new new is basically called the frequency of the radiation that is being emitted so this new has another uh, formula that is new there is a relationship between the frequency of the radiation and the wavelength of the radiation so as we have told you that any electromagnetic radiation as you can see uh, there is some uh, there, there is a distance between the two peaks or two troughs and this uh, distance is basically called the wavelength so there is a relationship between the frequency of that light and the wavelength of that light and this relationship is new is equal to c by lambda or the 1 by lambda this part is also expressed as new bar or it is also called the wave number so the equation that become uh, by substituting this new with c by lambda the equation that we obtain will become delta e is equal to h into c new new bar so this is the wave number so the uh, this much amount of energy is being absorbed or emitted by the photon so uh, in case of absorption this much of uh, energy is being absorbed by the electron and it goes to the excited state and from the excited state when it again decays to the ground state 
this much of energy is being emitted and in that case whatever the spectra that we will see that is called the absorption spectra so as you can see if there is a delta n is equal greater than 0 or we can say if uh, up, up, uh, after the absorption of the energy when the electron is going to the uh, higher energy state in that case whatever the spectra that we will obtain is called the absorption spectra on the other hand uh, for electron from any higher energy state when it decays to uh, some lower energy state in that case delta n will be negative or less than zero so in that case whatever the spectra that we will obtain is basically called the emission spectra so you can see that the absorption spectra and emission spectra are basically complementary to each other now uh, that we have told you that the energy expression for hydrogen atom for any nth principal quantum number is equal to this one now if we want to calculate the energy difference between the two state that is n1 state and n2 state will be equal to the delta e will be equal to e of n2 minus e of n1 so if you uh, put the value of uh, of this value is n2 you will obtain energy at the n n2 state and if you put the value n1 you will get energy at n1 state and if you just subtract this value you will obtain the energy gap between these two state so you can see that the energy gap between these two state is equal to this constant there is a minus sign into 1 by n2 square minus 1 by n1 square so if you just take this minus uh, inside this uh, bracket you will obtain the energy gap will be equal to me into e to the power 4 or all this constant into 1 by n1 square minus 1 by n2 square so previously in my previous slide we have shown you that there is a relationship between the energy that is absorbed or emitted with the wave number of the light that is being uh, absorbed or emitted so this relationship is delta e is equal to hc nu bar or we can write nu bar is equal to delta e by hc so if you just divide this with hc you will get the wave number of the or the wave number of the associated transition so whatever the transition occur uh, associated to that whatever the web number you will obtain by just simply divide this delta e or this equation with hc so if you do that you will obtain this equation so this is the uh, equ uh, web number that is associated with the following transition in between uh, n2 state and n1 state now as you can see that uh, <coughs> previously when there uh, people uh, do not have any knowledge about the quantum mechanical model of atom at that time also they have observed these types of hydrogen atom spectra and to predict the wave number associated with all this spectra uh, they have uh, proposed this empirical equation where they uh, they have uh, they have shown or they have proposed this equation when nu bar is equal to some constant rh by 1 minus n1 square minus 1 by n2 square so in that case they have actually determined this constant experimentally from the hydrogen atom spectra and this constant is basically uh, known as Rydberg's constant So they have experimentally seen from the hydrogen atomic spectra the value of this Rydberg constant is basically this one. So 10973.3 centimeter inverse. So this is the experimental value. Now if you just compare these two equations, you can see that the second part is same. And the first part if you just compare that all, all, all the parameters is basically constant. So we can say that this whole part is nothing but the Rydberg constant value so people have tried to people have calculated this constant value and they have tried to correlate this value with this Rydberg constant so they have seen that there is some difference between this constant value and this Rydberg constant value and this is because basically as the hydrogen atom system is basically two body system where the, the, the nucleus is at the center and electron is rotating around this nucleus in some fixed orbit so in that case 
uh, in this equation whatever that we have used is basically the mass of the electron but in actual system we should not use the exact mass of the electron instead of that we should use the reduced mass of the system the two body system and the reduced mass of the two body system is equal to me into mp by me plus mp now uh, i have uh, talked about the concept of this uh, reduced mass in my uh, rigid rotor model chapter so if you are interested you can go to that uh, portion in my uh, channel chembiosis and from that you can understood about the concept of the reduced mass so whenever we have used or that they have used the reduced mass instead of this mass of the electron in this equation then whatever the constant they have obtained uh, uh, theoretically is almost exactly matches with this Rydberg constant so which shows that our quantum mechanical model that whatever we have derived is basically uh, 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 experimentally also justified with this equation because all this equation they have derived experimentally and whatever this equation that was derived theoretically so our theoretical model and experimental model is matching very well which shows uh, that the quantum mechanical model of hydrogen atom is very much accurate now uh, there are some uh, selection rule that is being associated for the transition in between any uh, two states for hydrogen atom system so as you can see that there are so many principal quantum number or so many energy states for hydrogen atom and transition in between any state is not feasible there are some uh, selection rule that has to be satisfied uh, and, and and if that selection rule is satisfied only in that case only the transition in between the two states will be allowed so you can see that there are basically three rules that has to be followed uh, to satisfy the selection rule and in that condition only there will be some transition in between these two states so the first rule is that that uh, delta s is equal to zero so there should not be any change in the spin quantum number however in case of hydrogen atom as it is a one electron system so the spin quantum number s will always be equal to half so that's why whatever the in a, uh, transition uh, is there always delta s will always be equal to zero because hydrogen is single atomic system so this rule will always be valid in any type of transition so th this is always allowed for the hydrogen atom system now coming back to the rule number two where the second rule is delta l is equal to plus minus one so the change in the orbital angular momentum quantum number should be that one so if there are two energy state and uh, any transition that has to be happen in that case it has some orbital quantum number l1 and it has this energy state has some orbital quantum number l2 and l2 minus l1 that change in the orbital angular quantum number should be equal to plus minus one only in that condition the transi transition will be allowed otherwise the transition will not be allowed okay so this is the second rule the third rule is that the <coughs> delta j that is the change in the total angular uh, angular quant angular quantum number or the total angular momentum quantum number that should be equal to either plus minus one or zero so these are the three rules that has to be satisfied when there will be any transition in between the two energy levels for hydrogen atom now let's see uh, some examples where we have to uh, predict whether this trans the transition is allowed or not allowed so suppose that i have told you that these are the basically term symbol for hydrogen energy state for the energy state for hydrogen atom so suppose there should be a uh, transition in between these two states they are basically same energy state so we have to uh, we have to determine whether the transition in between these two states are possible or not so here you can see that uh, this value is showing the delta j value basically so you can see the delta j is equal to 0 for this transition and we know that for selection rule delta j should be 0 or plus minus 1 so this selection rule is being satisfied 
now we have to see whether selection rule number 3 is satisfied or not now you can see that it is uh, the electron is residing in the s orbital so l is equal to 0 here also the electron is residing in the s orbital so l is also equal to 0 so for this transition the delta l of the transition is equal to 0 but we have seen that in rule number for any transition in between the two state delta l should be plus minus 1 which is not satisfied in that case so this transition will not be allowed now uh, coming back to second example where we have to see whether transition in between these two state so this is one energy state this is one energy state which is shown by this term symbol so we have to see whether the transition in between these two states are allowed or not so you can we 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 shouldn't uh, one thing that i want to uh, mention that you can see that this is the uh, spin multiplicity so that so the criteria of delta s is equal to zero is always satisfied for hydrogen atom system because hydrogen is basically one electron system so we should not have to bother about the rule number one we have to only check for rule number two or three so according to rule number two delta l should be plus or minus one so here you can see that the electron is residing in the p orbital where l is equal to one and in that case the electron is residing in the s orbital where l is equal to zero so change in uh, orbital angular quantum number that is equal to minus one which is uh, allowed now you can see that the j value is half in that case and j value is half also in that case so delta j that is the change in the total orbital angular quantum number is equal to zero which is also satisfied uh, so you can see that both rule number two and rule number three satisfied so this transition is allowed now uh, just take the third example in third example we can see that this is l is equal to three l is equal to two where the electron is residing in p orbital and in that case uh, electron is residing in s orbital so l is equal to 0 so as you can sorry this has to be l is equal to 1 so you can see that the change in the orbital angular quantum number delta l is equal to minus 1 and you can see that the change in the total orbital angular quantum number that is delta j is equal to 3 by 2 minus half that is equal to minus 1 so both this uh, rule number 2 and rule number 3 is satisfied so that's why this transition is also allowed now just take the example of this fourth one so you can see in that case the electron is residing in the d orbital where l is equal to 2 now in that case the electron is residing in the s orbital where the l is equal to 0 so you can see that the change in the orbital angular quantum number delta l is equal to minus 2 but the selection rule says that the delta l has to be plus minus 1 so the second rule is not satisfied so that's why this transition will not be allowed so this way we can actually predict that which transition is allowed and which transitions are not allowed here i am also leaving some problem for you to solve uh, so these are the transition and you have to predict that which transitions are allowed and which transitions are not allowed if you have any doubts or problem regard to solve this uh, problem you can ask me through the comment section then i will uh, try to i will solve this problem in a separate lecture if you really need so so that's all, uh, that's all from this uh, chapter in the next lecture i will talk about the helium atom system which is basically two electron system bit complicated system we will show uh, you that how we can solve these types of two electron system where we have to do some kinds of approximation so all those things we will discuss in my next lecture so till then take care of yourself bye